list will help you stay smart and stay safe. Everything you do, online, offline, requires a phone number. From your mobile phone. You're looking for a disposable phone number. To your computer. Cleaning out your computer helps the computer run faster. And your kitchen. A kid can't reach up on the stove and get burned. We're protecting your entire home. Your smartphone is your key. Stay smart and stay safe with the list starting now. Hey everyone, I'm Jimmy Rose. And I'm Christina Guerrero. And guys, today we are looking at ways you can stay smart and stay safe in our fast changing and sometimes volatile world. Yeah, if you've heard the term burner phone, it was probably used to describe those cheap disposable phones used by the bad guys. Yes, but in reality, everyone from moms and dads to college students can use them for security and privacy. Burner phones are going straight and that's our featured story at the top of the list. Pages, pay phones is dead. Right? You use these phones to set up a meet, you go to that meet, and talk face to face. Crime dramas like The Wire and Better Call Saul introduced us to the concept of the burner phone and all its shady potential. Say hello to my little friend. It really comes from the, the criminal element of basically you use the phones nefariously and then you get rid of it, burn it. But tech blogger Ken Colburn, CEO of Data Doctors Data and Recovery Services, says there are reasons to consider owning a burner phone other than staying out of an orange jumpsuit. Starting with privacy and anonymity. You may not realize, but your phone number is now probably way more valuable to the marketing world than your social security number. Really? Yes. Why? Generally, everything you do, online, offline, requires a phone number. Everything from password resets to signing up for streaming services requires you to give up your digits. All of that activity gets tied back to your phone number. They could recreate your entire life and identity just off those digits. Well, between what the credit card companies track and what the phone companies track, they know everything about us. Having a burner can add a layer of safety when shopping sites like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Hello? Right, okay. Uh, Thanks for the call. So glad that guy doesn't have my real number. As soon as it becomes a problem, an overrun, that's when you burn it, I'll get a new one. Next, burners make great backup phones and cheap enough to keep in your backpack or glove box. It's $20, it's inexpensive. You keep it in your backpack, your briefcase, what have you. If you're traveling, something happens to your primary phone, you're instantly in good shape. And a burner doesn't have to be basic. We found this Samsung Galaxy smartphone for $25. Most prepaid plans started around $15 a month with no contract. I'm on one, what's your emergency? Plus, in an emergency, like your regular phone being stolen, you'll be able to call for help. These devices all that connect to the cell networks all have to be able to at least dial 911 even if they're not a, a functioning or activated phone. We'll wrap with burner apps. These offer the privacy and safety of a burner phone without having to lug around extra hardware. There are apps you can actually put on your regular phone that will give you a second number that is completely disposable. Some of them are free, some of them might cost you $5 a month. Ken says unless you need a physical backup phone, the apps will suffice for most of us. Really for all of us, it's the phone number. So you're not looking for a disposable phone, you're looking for a disposable phone number. Ken likes the burner app which comes with a free number then costs about five bucks a month but there is a totally free option. Both are available for Android and iOS. Google Voice has all of the same features, text, call, voicemail. So if somebody texts you something that includes an image, that would just show up on your phone through the Google Voice app. Cooking up new uses for burners is at the top of the list. All right, when you think of decluttering, you probably think of your closet or garage, but there is something else that'll benefit from a good clean out, your computer. And it takes work, but Jackie Danker is in delete mode and showing us how to fill that trash folder. Ugh, the dreaded thought of cleaning out a computer. This really gives me a lot of anxiety because my computer is a mess. And why put ourselves through this torture? Cleaning out your computer helps the computer run faster. So to show us how it's done, we turn to founder and CEO of Marcus Networking, Eric Marcus. Let's start by cleaning out our deleted items folder. You have about 87,000 items that you have not deleted. 
this is embarrassing. A little bit. So this is the stuff that I've already deleted? Correct. So every email that you delete goes to your deleted items folder. That takes up space in Outlook. Yeah, apparently this folder is for backup in case you wanted to bring back an email you didn't mean to delete. So what if we have Gmail, Yahoo, other emails other than Outlook? It all applies the same. You can just simply click on deleted item, right click, okay. and you can go down to empty folder. I just feel like a weight off my chest. That's great. Bye bye to 87,000 emails I thought I deleted. Next, purge unused downloads. Downloads is a folder that Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Firefox uses natively to download files. And these files can be pretty big, which could slow down your computer. So head over to your downloads folder. And it's pretty simple, right? Just click on the one that you want to delete, yep. right click, and you're just gonna go down to delete. And it will actually delete. It won't be in some weird deleted folder. No, good question. So this now takes you to your recycle bin. On a Mac, it's the trash can. Whereas on a PC, it's the recycle bin. And you want to make sure you take out that trash. If I right click on this and I empty the recycle bin, it's going to remove everything. You know how we have garbage days? Mm -hmm. Maybe every Monday we, we <laughs> take out the recycle bin. Finally, let's uninstall unused programs. A lot of people don't realize they download programs over time, and those programs, if you're not using them, can be removed. Which clears up tons of space. So for a PC, you head to Settings, then click on Apps, then to Apps and Features. Just click on what you want to uninstall, and then click the Uninstall button. And boom! A Mac works the same way by heading to Finder, Apps, and then dragging unwanted programs to the trash. Ta-da! I mean, I still have work to do. <laughs> Working smarter so our computers don't have to work harder as we learn how to clean out our computers. It is a favorite appliance for many of us want to be chefs, but turns out gas stoves could be causing problems for people and the environment. We're looking at why it may be time to update that old school way of cooking to a safer, cleaner alternative. Now you're cooking with gas. Chefs love their gas stoves, but it turns out this old school appliance has some downsides. We don't stand over the exhaust from a tailpipe of a car and breathe intentionally, but we do do that with stoves. It's quite unusual when you think about it. Rob Jackson, professor of environmental sciences at Stanford University, fires up a few things you need to know about gas stoves. For starters, let's look at indoor pollution. What we measured was two forms of pollution. One is gas that's leaking into your home all the time from leaky fittings and from the stove itself. Unlike gas water heaters or furnaces that are required to vent the exhaust outside. The stove is really the only widely used appliance where there isn't a requirement for the exhaust to be sent outdoors. Most of this leaking gas is in the form of methane. And the second form of pollution was generated by the flame itself. NOx gases, nitrogen dioxide in particular, carbon monoxide. These pollutants are known to trigger asthma, coughing, and wheezing. The best defense? Turn the ventilation hood on. Every time you turn your gas stove on. Next, what's the environmental impact? The methane and the carbon dioxide emissions we estimated to be equivalent to about the exhaust from 2 million U.S. cars over the course of a year. That's gas released from the burning flame. The leakage from methane alone was equivalent to about half a million U.S. cars over a year. In terms of monitoring the environment and greenhouse gases, the EPA has never included this data in the past, but that's about to change. In 2022, they're going to update their estimates of the climate impact of gas appliances. If you want to lower your impact, an alternative to gas is an induction stove. Induction cooktops are safer, there's no flame. A kid can't reach up on the stove and put his or her hand into a flame and get burned. Induction stoves come in countertop or drop-in form and use magnetism with the pan to create heat. You can literally put in a number saying, I want 500 degrees or whatever you want. Countertop induction burners can be found online starting at around 50 bucks. People are starting to appreciate that there are good electric options now compared to gas. We are turning up the heat on gas stoves. 
As the list continues with our smart and safe special, protect yourself from car buying scams. It's basically a scam app that now has access to your bank account. And easy to use tech to keep your home safe. This is a plug and play device with zero configuration needed. Plus, if you have a dating profile, then you can be a target. The red flags to watch out for on dating apps. More stay smart and stay safe next on the list. Hey YouTube, isn't this a great episode? I know you're right in the middle of watching, but just wanted to remind you to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss one minute of the list. All right, now back to the show. We're back. A big part of staying smart and staying safe is knowing the latest techniques scammers are using to trick us out of our money. Now, some of the most prevalent are vehicle related. So we are looking at how to steer clear of car scams. It's always important to look for ways to save money when it comes to your car, but be alert for scammers who have other plans. You want to make sure that you are your own first line of defense and audit your needs instead of your wants. So to help keep you clear from getting scammed, we turn to Shahe Kalukian, owner of Mazvo Auto Car Care Center. First up, the car buying scams. You got to look out for several things such as no phone number in the ad. It'll say it's beautiful, it's this, it's that. Well, where's the phone number? Oh, you've got to reply to the Craigslist format to get a response back. The other thing that a lot of people don't realize is when you show up to buy a vehicle, you meet the individual, they say, hi, I'm Frank. Oh, hi, I'm so-and-so. Here's the title, look at the car. You look at it, but you skip one important step. You don't look on the title to see the gentleman you just met. Is that his name on the title? Because if it says Cindy, obviously it's not his car. So whose car is it? It's probably the person that he bought it from, but never registered in his name because he wants to be missing in action to where he can keep the money, not show it, and of course it's a cash buy. That's the scam, it starts there. Shahe also recommends to steer clear of any sob stories on Craigslist. They typically aren't true and instead are trying to get you to sympathize with them. Next, don't fall for the windshield scam. I would think twice when you're approached by someone at a car wash, and that's their favorite spot. They come up to you and go, oh, we're just checking to see if your windshield's cracked. We want to help you. It'll be free. And you think, well, how could it be free? Oh, you have insurance, don't you? Not a problem. These scammers often will offer a gift card to a local restaurant or some other incentive to incite you into going with them. What you don't realize, unfortunately, is you've been scammed. Because what happens is those companies, they mark up the price so high that a normal windshield that would cost somewhere around $200, they're going to hit your insurance for five, six, seven hundred. Instead, take it to someone you trust, or if your crack is small, you go to the chip, you grab some gauze, you get some alcohol, you wipe it down, you take two droplets of that clear liquid nail polish into that little chip, you take a piece of scotch tape this way and a piece of scotch tape that way, you wait six hours, you take a razor blade, you take it off, you just did what they were going to do. The last scam you need to be alert for is the car purchase payment scam. You make the deal, you're ready to go, and then all of a sudden they give you some sort of a link that you're supposed to follow. Basically a scam app that links you to something that now has access to your bank account and routing number, which you're going to have to give. When buying a car, Shahe says to stay away from Zelle, Venmo, or any online payment sites. Instead, request to do the payment at a bank through a cashier's check. And those are some tips to keep you safe from car scammers. If you want to rest easier knowing your home is safe and secure, there's tech that can give you some peace of mind. Here are three high-tech home security gadgets you may want to pick up to help lock down your home security. Coming in at number one, iCube, a wire-free 1080p motion detection camera that's powered by the sun. Thanks to solar technology and energy saving technology, IQ will keep on working forever without needing to be charged. Since it's solar powered, wireless and portable, you can stick it wherever you want. Backyard, front door, kids play area. You can even take it with you on say, a camping trip. It's very important to keep safe outside. iCube, allowing you to recharge your phone or another device. Whenever it detects motion, it flips on and starts streaming video to the app on your smartphone. iCube even has a two-way audio system for communicating with visitors. This one will set you back 100 bucks and is available at imag-electronics.com. At number two, the S1 Smart Lock. Has various unlock methods. It is safe and convenient. You can unlock the lock easily with the light touch. 
Your smartphone is your key. It also unlocks with a punch-in passcode, and if its battery dies, it can be accessed with a physical key. You can even ask Alexa and Google Assistant to unlock your front door. It has an auto-lock setting, so you'll never forget to secure your door, and you can send someone like, say, a housekeeper, a temporary electronic key with an access time window. The app will send you push notifications to tell you when the door opens. You can also access the lock opening records at any time. If you want to lock this one down, prices start at $250, and you can find it at yeeuu.com. Those first two products require a wireless network, so let's secure that Wi-Fi with the third home security gadget on our list. Deeper Connect Mini. This is a plug and play device with zero configuration needed. It couldn't be easier. It's basically a virtual private network with no subscription cost. And it has a firewall to keep all your devices safe from hackers. It prevents your online history from being tracked or used by third parties. Your data will be transmitted independently. No more privacy issues. It's available at deeper.network for 325 bucks. Techie ways to secure our home. Lots more to come on the list, so stay with us. We're back and ready to stay smart and stay safe while being entertained. Teresa Strasser is checking out some fascinating documentaries on the subject of white collar crime on the hot list. It has evolved to the corporate crime of the century. It's been more than 15 years since the Oscar-nominated documentary Enron, The Smartest Guys in the Room. Oh, I didn't expect that. We rounded up three you can stream now, starting with the most recent, McMillions. I have a story for you. This story has got everything. Revenge. Drugs. Greed. Ronald McDonald. This HBO docu-series debuted in 2020. It serves up the story of the McDonald's Monopoly game, which it turns out was rigged for about a dozen years. Mark Wahlberg, executive produced, and told us all about it. It's such a fascinating story, the whole McDonald's Monopoly scam. You can't believe it when you see it, but it's actually a true story. What an amazing cast of characters. People are absolutely loving the series, so I'm thrilled about it. You can get away with something over and over and over. You only gotta be caught once. Now let's roll the dice and move ahead to Netflix to check out Dirty Money. The system takes our best and brightest people and they get paid outlandish sums to look the other way. This docu-series premiered its first season in 2018 and a second season in 2020 with each episode of both looking at a different case of corporate corruption. What I would discover was much darker and more vast than anything I had imagined. And talk about good reviews, both seasons have 100% good reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Nobody cares. As long as the money is flowing, the business continues. And the white collar crime continues with fire fraud. It's a great time to be a con man in America. Hulu premiered this stock in 2019 after snagging an interview with Fire Festival founder Billy McFarland, who cheated investors and concert goers out of millions. Could be amazing, could be a disaster. People have called you a sociopath. How do you respond to that? Yikes. And uh, bonus, if watching this one leaves you craving more info on the Fire Festival, Netflix also released a doc about it simply called Fire. Just wait until you see what you're getting yourselves into. The biggest event in a decade, I promise you. I'll be there. White collar crime docs on the hot list. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Trying to stay smart and safe when you're in the online dating world can be challenging. So if you're going to look for love, make sure to look out. Hedy D. Jamal is swiping wrong on these dating app red flags. Singles, beware. According to the Federal Trade Commission, romance scams cost starry-eyed singles a record $304 million in 2020. And that number is climbing. If you have a dating profile, then you can be a target. They tend to work the compliments with vulnerable people because people may have been craving connection for so long. You start believing in people, and when the red flags pop up, you tend to ignore them. Laura Bellotta, founder of Single in the City, a Toronto-based matchmaking service, share some red flags that you should be aware of when swiping right. Starting with a fast emotional connection. 
catfish come on really, really strong because what they want to do is they want to reel you in quickly. If they're showering you with compliments and tell you that they're in love after a couple of chats, beware. They're trying to gain your trust quickly in order to manipulate you to get what they need from you, which is essentially money. Next up, they're invisible. They never want to hop on a video call or a phone call with you. If they have every excuse in the world to avoid your FaceTime call, it's a big red flag. And as far as social media? Maybe they've only posted one picture or two pictures. And the pictures that they're using on their social media account are the same pictures that they've used on their dating app. You can screen photos by doing a reverse image search on Google Images. This may let you know if the photo belongs to someone else. Last up, they need a hero. After a scammer wins you over with affection and sweet talk, they'll usually lure you in even more with sympathy. They'll generally ask you for money because they need help with a family member who may be sick, they need to pay for medical bills. Or if they're stranded somewhere and they ask you for money to travel to see you, watch out because those are huge red flags. If your friends are also saying, hey, this person may be a scammer, then you need to listen to them and you need to leave that situation right away. You can report frauds and scams to the FTC at ftc.gov slash complaint. Watching out for scams while you're looking for love. You know, I met my husband before dating apps were a thing and I'm glad I missed the boat on that one because I think I'd be really bad at it. Well, they really can increase your odds. You go from meeting dozens of crazy people in person to meeting thousands of crazy people online. Or you can fall in love. <laughs> okay, you made it to the end of this episode of The List, so you've clearly discovered a key feature of YouTube. You get to watch stuff, and yeah, it streams right to you, wherever you are, for free. But wait, there's more! You can express yourself by liking this video and leaving us a comment. And I'm not done. The handy subscribe button will make sure you never miss The List. What a raft of features, huh? I won't even try to upsell you on the clear coat. But here's some other episodes you can test drive. Enjoy!